Well, it says that I'm live. So, hopefully I'm live. Uh, let me just check a few things here to make sure. Usually when the computer says I'm live, it, it's not lying. The computer is usually quite, uh, quite truthful. So, that's nice to know. We'll start in about 15 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Well, hello and welcome to this live Q&A session. Sorry, I just, I forgot something. Just one second here. I usually don't do this, but I'm in a bit of a rush this morning. Ah. Wanted to grab my wedding ring and my watch. I'm running a little behind today because <laughs> once again, my internet wasn't working very well. In fact, during this live lesson, there might be a few little hiccups. I'm a little frustrated but there. Ooh, now, I'm knocking my microphone around. Let me just double check the audio. So, it might be a little lower quality. The streaming software is running well but my internet connection once again is acting weird. You're probably tired of me talking about my internet connection. I thought it was all fixed but we'll see how this lesson goes. That's why you didn't see me um in the chat before the lesson. Usually, I like to pop into the chat and say hi to everybody but enough about me. Enough about my internet connection. Welcome to this live English question and answer lesson at 10 o'clock. Um normally, I used to do these at 11 a.m. but I have decided to do them at 10 a.m. instead. Maybe 11 would have been better. I would have had more time to troubleshoot things but so far, so good. If you don't know what this is, this is a live question and answer lesson about the English language. If you are learning English, there is a link. Hopefully, I remembered to put the link in the description. Uh yes, I did. There is a link to a form. If you click that, you can send me a question and I will try my best to answer it. It can be about pronunciation. It can be about anything having to do with the English language. It can be about me. I'm happy to talk about myself all the time as well. Anyways, I do wanna say hi to a few people. Hi to Dave who's here to moderate the chat. Hi to Hansi and Maxim and Suhanor and Harry 300 and Yaroslav and Mode Eggs, Lolly Lolly, Pony Taylor. Let me scroll back a bit. Wanda Prado is here. Nanu is here. Nano, good to see you, Nano. And I'll scroll back a bit more. Freddie Wolf, I see that name too. Very familiar name. Welcome. How does this work? Uh, I'm going to put the questions on the screen. It looks like that and then I'm going to see if there are any questions for me to answer and I will go and check that right now. Let me have a sip of water first. Actually, let me do a little audio check. So, you might notice that the video isn't super smooth today. That's just the way it's going to be. Hopefully, it keeps working. Let's uh, cross our fingers as Mode Ag said in the chat. But as long as the audio is working, that's the most important part of this lesson, I think. Um okay. Questions on the screen. Sip of water. Here we go. Here we go. Oh wow. There's already 13 questions. They come quickly, don't they? Renata has the first question. Renata says, hello. How was your New Year's Eve with your family? It was great. We spend New Year's Eve with a couple of different relatives. Uh, and it was a fun night. We played games like board games uh and then we all celebrated when New Year's Eve arrived at midnight. Can I use flawlessly and seamlessly interchange- interchangeably? Thank you in advance for your answer, Bob. Have a great day. So, it went flawlessly. It went seamlessly. Yes, I think you can use both interchangeably. I was in a play. How did the show go? It went seamlessly. It went flawlessly. That means it was perfect. Everything went really, really well. Let's see here. Thanks, Renata, for that question. From Yaroslav, morning, the wisest teacher, Bob. Hope you are fine. Could you please explain the phrases? I'm gonna stick a the in there. To be on the clock, sounds nuts, and in the flesh. Thanks in advance. So, if I arrive at a party and someone says, Bob's here, I could say, in the flesh. 
That means I'm not there via Zoom or FaceTime or Skype. I'm not there via telephone call. I'm actually there in person. When you say something sounds nuts, you're saying it sounds crazy. If I said, I'm gonna uh go parachuting. I'm going to jump out of an airplane five times today. You would say, that sounds nuts or that sounds crazy. Uh and then when you're on the clock, it means you're working. Let's say you're watching a show that has police officers in it. When they stop in at a bar to ask questions, someone might offer them a drink and they'll say, no, thank you. I'm on the clock because they're not allowed to have an alcoholic beverage while they're working. So, you'll hear that quite commonly uh in those types of shows. Mode in the chat says, I hope this lesson is gonna be relaxing for you now that your internet is on the fritz. Yes, it's on the fritz. Um I think it'll be okay, Mode. I think I just need to relax. I need to enjoy the fact that it's working so far and we should just uh enjoy the time we have together hopefully for an hour. We'll see. Next question from Valerie. Hi, Bob. Wish you and your family happy new year and all the best. Well, I wish the same to you. I hope, Valerie, that you have a great year. I hope 2023 is just an amazing year for all of us. That would just be awesome. Hey, I also see Judith in the chat. Hi to Judith. Good to see you. Adisa, Jemena. Good to see some people here. Uh fun stuff. Judith always asks great questions um in the comments. One of my favorite question askers. Uh let's see here. From Mia. Hello, teacher Bob. Hope you are having a good day. Could you tell the difference between various and varied? Thank you. So, I went to buy a new car and they had uh various types of cars there. They had two-door cars, four-door cars. They had various types of cars. The kinds of cars were quite varied. So, it's just simply a matter of switching how you're using the word. So, various types of cars and the kinds of cars were varied. Uh, It's a tricky one, isn't it? Akil says, Bob, I have a minted neighbor. Is it correct? I would not use the word minted that way. We use the word mint. So, there's a Canadian slang for the word mint that means cool. Like, wow, that car is mint but don't learn that version of it. It's a very rare way to use the word mint. I think it only is used that way in Canada but minted is used to talk about when they make a new coin or when they make new money. They mint new money. So, they minted a new coin in Canada recently. So, hopefully, we see that soon. Uh next question from Zhao Yu. Hello, Bob. I want to ask what this sentence means. What a thing to do. Thanks. Have a good day. So, if I said if my mom said she was um let's see. Let's think of something crazy my mom could do. My mom is in her late seventies. Let's say my mom said she was going to go white water rafting with her friends. I would probably say, wow, what a thing to do at your age. That's the best example I can come up with. Um you're basically saying you're surprised at something that someone is going to do. Okay, let me see here. Next question is from Arson. What do you think about the situation in Ukraine? Number one, I could not believe that it even is happening and I can't believe it's still happening. My wish for the world is that everything is peaceful. I find that when I read the news about what's happening in Ukraine, it's very, very difficult to read. I wish that things would go back to the way they were. Next question from Andy Park is, hi, Bob. Are you familiar with Mark Lee from NCT? He's a Canadian rapper. I really like his Canadian accent especially when he raps. I am not familiar with him. Um I should maybe do a Google search later and see what I can figure out. Hey, Brent from Speak English with this guy. Member for 32 months says, thanks for all the good work you do. Thank you very, very much. Let me go back. Mode Ags member for 21 months says, I second you, Brent. So, long time members. Thank you so much uh guys for the shout outs and for the congratulations. That's nice to have that. Um it's inspirational especially on a day like this when I got started late um and when uh things aren't worth it working perfectly. 
apparently even my mouth isn't working perfectly there. Emray, my question is how can we, I'm gonna remove the word be. My question is how can we think in French, in English? Sorry, my, maybe my brain's not working. Let me start again. My question is how can we, so I'm gonna fix that word, think in English. So, I find for me as a French learner, as someone who's learning French as a second language, in order for me to think in French, I need to spend a lot of my day using French. I think um, um thinking in a language comes from over exposure. So, if you listen to a lot of English, if you read a lot of English, if you have the radio on in English, um you will eventually, I think your brain will eventually switch but it does take I would say one or two years of study before you will experience that. Thinking in another language doesn't happen immediately. It takes quite a bit of time. Let's see here. Mode says, Mr. Bob, have a sip. It's still too early to break your New Year's resolution. Ah, my dear teacher, I find phrasal verbs overwhelming and keep lamenting about it. Could you please help me? Yes, I haven't made the lesson yet but I have a few phrasal verb lessons coming up that I will be recording this year. Hopefully, that helps a bit. The other thing with phrasal verbs is they're used a lot in everyday conversation. So, try to find as many ways to hear everyday conversation as possible. I usually recommend uh they're not my favorite kind of TV shows but um reality TV is where you will hear a lot of common English um expression. So, see if you can find a few of those shows that you can tolerate and watch. Ahmad, where to start my English learning? Well, my feeling is that this is a new shirt. I'm not sure or a new sweater. I'm not sure I like it. I'm not sure how this is supposed to go. <laughs> I'm not a fashion guy. Ahmad, so if you are just starting um with your English learning journey, I would say uh two things. You need to do a lot of reading and a lot of listening but don't forget about starting with some English conversation or at least hiring a tutor for 30 minutes per week. For your case, I would say whatever your native language is, find a tutor on a website or app like Preply. There is a link below who speaks English and speaks your native language and use that to create a bridge to help you start learning English. That would be my recommendation but certainly Start reading and listening right away. Lollux, I am currently learning English. How long should I study each day? So, this is an interesting one um because it's different for different people but if you study for 30 minutes five days a week, I would say that's the minimum. If you can study for an hour to an hour and a half five or six days a week, that will get you a lot of progress. And then as well, don't forget to immerse yourself in English outside of your study time. So, make sure you're listening to English radio stations even via the internet. Make sure that when you uh read the news, you read it in English. Make sure that if you sit down to watch a TV show, if you can switch the language like on Netflix, you can switch the language. Try watching half of it in English and half in your native language. Um but yeah, I would certainly say 30 minutes five days a week is the minimum. An hour to an hour and a half five or six days a week is great. Let's see here. This is from Adisa. Hi, I live in Ireland and I'm from Albania. I work from home and I'm not talking with anyone English. How can I improve my English? Thank you. So, yesterday we did a lesson on New Year's resolutions. So, your New Year's resolution should probably be to join some kind of club or some kind of social activity or to start playing some kind of sport where you will be around other English speaking people. So, maybe join a book club if you can find one. Uh join, I suggested joining a curling club which is a funny sport here in Canada where we throw heavy rocks. Um also, if you're having trouble um I would say see if the government offers any programs for people who are learning English. That might be another good place for you to start. Let's see. 
Unsel with lots of emojis, flowers, a tulip, a cup of coffee, a cookie, a teacher, a tractor, a baseball cap, and a heart. Thanks, Unsel. Hi, I love emojis, by the way. You probably realize that. Uh, should I check the audio for a sec? Dave, give me a thumbs up if everything. Yeah, or Dave, give me a report. Is it a little bit glitchy but the audio is good or I'm not sure. Just tell me how it's uh how the experience is from your end. Hi, if you are a teacher at the school where you studied before, can you explain the positive and negative changes in the student profile from past to present with a few items? So, my belief is that teenagers don't really change that much. So, here's a couple of things that are very common with teenagers. Teenagers sometimes don't get along with their parents. Teenagers sometimes as they become adults don't want to listen to teachers who are in charge of them. There are a lot of very common things because teenagers are moving from childhood to adulthood and so they sometimes behave a certain way. They might be a little more rebellious. They certainly all still do this. They try to find something uh that they like while they are in high school. How have things become worse? So, anyways, things haven't become better. The only way I would say things may have become worse is that um high school students are often on their phones. I'm worried that they aren't doing other things enough. I don't mind phones. I don't mind social media but I'm worried they're missing out on other things and in particular, I would say that teenage boys play a lot of video games. Maybe too much. They might be uh, spending too much time playing video games instead of doing other things like going out with friends or enjoying each other's company. Ario is here. Hi, Ario. Um let's see here. Dave gives me a thumbs up. I think that's Dave. Audio and video both seem good to me. Awesome. I'll keep going. My dropped frames percentage is going down as I do this. So, but just as I said it, it started going up. Hopefully, I didn't uh, jinx it. Ario says, hola, Mr. Bob. How are you? I'm good. I hope you're good too. On Monday, we start our work day again. How about you? Yes. On Monday, I go back to work. My second question is, what do you usually do during holidays uh, and a work day? So, during holidays, I relax a bit more. I usually read a bit more. I didn't do that during this break. Um and Jen and I usually in at this time of year, we spend time cleaning up. It's we don't do spring cleaning of our house because we're very busy on the farm but we'd like to do some cleaning around this time of year. So, um that's something we'll be doing today as well. We'll be dropping some stuff off at the thrift store, doing a bit of recycling, etc, etc. Nikolai says, hello, Bob. What does it mean slog away? When you slog away at something, it means you just work at it. Let's say you were asked to dig a ditch. A ditch is a kind of a an excavation in the ground so water can run. It's very hard work with a shovel. You would need to slog away and it might be a hot day and you're just slogging away in the heat. So, it simply means to work hard at something. Lolly, lolly. Hi, lolly says, bonjour, Bob. Please, could you put these words in ascending order of use? Odd, strange, weird, and bizarre. Merci. I would say we use weird and strange quite a bit but all four words are very common. Um did you meet my cousin Joe? He's a little bit odd. He's a little bit strange. He's a little bit weird. Probably wouldn't use bizarre but we might say he acts in a bizarre way or that's bizarre. So, let me rephrase. Um we would use odd, strange, and weird a lot and bizarre we might use actually, I would say things like this. If someone said, I was driving the other day and I saw six green cars in a row, I would say that's bizarre. I might also say that's odd, strange, or weird. So, anyways, they're all used quite a bit and would be recognized if you use them. Uh let's see. I don't know. I'm gonna skip this next one. It's a little odd. It's asking me if I think Jen will divorce me if I meet. No, I don't think if I don't think she's going to meet someone wealthier and leave me uh hanging. So, let me just there were other parts of that question that didn't make sense. So, um here we go from Majid. Hi, dear Bob. 
Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you too and wish you the best. How can I, gonna add the word I, how can I read a novel that has many new words to me and I don't understand and I would probably add it at the end. How can I read a novel that has many new words for me or to me, both work and I don't understand it. So, here's the thing. When you choose something to read, you don't want to choose something that's too difficult. You don't wanna choose something where you're looking up 20 or 30 words on every page. You wanna find a book where when you read a page, there's maybe two to 10 new words per page. This works really well if you're in a bookstore. You can open a book randomly and read a page and if there's only five or six words on that page that you don't know, you could probably read that book Look up a few words and get a good understanding. Um but if you're looking up more than that, it's going to become too challenging. So, try to find a book that's at the right level. Um yes. Yuri has the next question. Greetings again, sir. How could you explain the difference between to postpone and to take a rain check? Be well. So, let's see. I'll take a rain check. We could use these in the same way. Like, if I have a meeting and then my boss calls and says, I need to postpone the meeting. I might respond and say, okay, I'll take a rain check. I don't use the rain check phrase very often. Let's get a good definition of that phrase. Meaning of, I'll take a rain check. By the way, the common use of rain check is when you go to buy an item that's on sale and they don't have any left and they will give you a rain check which means you can come back later and buy that item at the sale price but we use it as well when we don't want to do something. So, if someone said, do you wanna go out for supper tonight? I could say, I'll have to take a rain check because I'm busy. That would be how I would use that phrase. So, postpone has a little more of an element that um the person planning it is in control. So, I can postpone a meeting If I ask you if you want to go out for supper, you can take a rain check on that. So, hopefully that made some sense. So, Albert says, hello, I watched an old American film. I'm gonna add the word an, an. I watched an old American film. Comments about the film said that there was a transatlantic accent there. Can you tell a little about this accent? It might have been an older film. We don't use the word transatlantic or uh, the term is unfamiliar to me. What is a transatlantic accent? The minute or trans is a consciously learned accent of English fashionable in the late 19th and 20th century. Yeah and it says that that accent went away. It was the model of correct English taught in American pronunciation and elocution classes. So, it must have been a very proper way to speak American English and it sounds like we we don't use it anymore. So, must have been an old an old one. From Wilma, hi teacher Bob. I would like to know if you intend to do more lessons using GeoGuessr. I watched them all and learned a lot. Thanks for your lessons. I admire you. Well, thanks Wilma for the kind words. Um yeah, those were fun. I did stop doing them because I was starting to lose my voice. At the time, I was doing a live stream on Tuesday nights, Friday mornings and Saturdays. Um so, let me think about it. Um that was fun. I did like playing GeoGuessr with all of you but uh don't uh don't count on it. I don't think I have room in my schedule right now to add something like that but they were definitely fun. Okay, let's see here. Freddie Bonjour Canada says, Bob, would it be correct if I asked you how much time does it take to edit your videos or how many times do you need? No. So, I don't wanna read the second one because it's incorrect. So, here's how you would say it. How much time does it take to edit your videos? How much time does it take you to edit your videos? Um How much time do you need to edit your videos? Yeah, all of those are fine but you can't use the many one. That doesn't work. Um it doesn't take me very much time at all because Jenna edits my videos. So, last year, Audrey edited my videos until 
Audrey edited my videos for about a year and then Jenna took over in September, October. So, Jenna is my current editor. So, I come up with the idea. I write a lesson plan. I go outside. I shoot the video. I write a lot of notes or instructions for Jenna and then she edits the video and sends me a copy. I have to actually look at uh, next week's video after this lesson to see if there's I send her corrections and usually there's very little. Jenna is very good at editing. Uh and then the video's done. It's nice. I like that workflow. It's a nice workflow. From Nan. Hi, Bob. Could you please explain the difference between when it comes to and in terms of? Are they the same? Thank you. So, when it comes to farming, Jen and I mostly grow outdoor flowers. We don't have a greenhouse. So, when it comes to our farm, so in terms of fertilizer, we use compost. Yeah, they're not exactly the same but they are in some ways. If you said, Bob, how do you, what fertilizer do you use on your flowers? I could say, well, when it comes to fertilizer, we use compost and I could say, well, in terms of fertilizer, we use compost. So, the first one, I can use that to introduce an idea. When it comes to making um videos for you, I find it very enjoyable. If you were to ask me, Bob, when it um talk about whether making videos make you happy. I can say, well, in terms of making me happy, yes, videos do that. So, in some ways, I think the second one requires that everyone is familiar with what is being talked about, I think. Uh from Roger Sodre. Hello, Bob. Could you please explain the expression? I should have known better. We need an N on the end of no. I should have known better. Thank you and happy new year. So, Jen and I were driving the other day and the GPS said, get off the highway and take a detour. There is an accident ahead. But because no one else was getting off the highway, we stayed on the highway and we ended up in a traffic jam for an hour. I should have known better. I should have listened to the GPS. When the GPS said, take the detour, I should have taken the detour. I should have known better. So, what that means is, I made a decision. I made a mistake and I had all the evidence I needed to do the opposite. So, yes, it means um let's say you're going to lift something heavy and you sometimes hurt your back but you lift it anyways and then you hurt your back. You would then say, I should have known better because you know that lifting heavy things can hurt your back. Balloon. Hi, Bob. How's life? Good. Question. Can you pronounce worn out, tint, opaque, rioting, and serum? Thanks for helping a girl out. So, yes, worn out. This is actually a new sweater. I'm not sure I like it yet. Um, my other one is a little bit worn out. Um, when I was young, a lot of my friends would uh, tint the windows of their car. So, they would kind of black out the windows a bit. Um, when something's opaque, it's difficult to see through it. Let's get the official meaning of opaque because I sometimes get it confused. Not able to see through, not transparent. There was a lot of steam on the windows so they were opaque. So, there you go. And then sometimes people are angry and they are riding in the streets and sometimes they make people drink a truth serum on a TV show so they tell the truth. Janeth from Sri Lanka. Dear Bob, sir, tell me some Canadian English books which can improve my vocabulary. So, I don't know any good Canadian books off the top of my head that would be at your level. So, I would rely on Google for this. I would search for Canadian books um that are good for learning English uh to improve your vocabulary. There are a lot of good Canadian authors and I think you'll be able to find one. So, sorry, I didn't really answer your question, Janeth, but uh Hopefully, you can find something that helps you. Mike says, hi, Bob. Could you define these? To rig, shake and bake, to be hot stuff. Thanks. So, when you rig something, it means you connect things. So, oftentimes, on a TV show, someone will, you know, they'll rig uh, something up. Um 
So, maybe when you open the door, something falls on your head. So, they will rig it up. So, it means to connect things with wires or ropes or to or to build something. Um shake and bake is actually there's two things about shake and bake. It's a box of spices you buy that you put in a plastic bag or bowl with chicken and then you close the bag or cover it and you shake it and the spices coat the chicken and then you bake it. So, it's kind of a box. It's spices and breadcrumbs that you mix with chicken and you shake it so it gets um on all the chicken and then you bake it. It also though is a phrase used in a movie Talladega Nights um starring uh what's his name? Will Ferrell. Um and they say it basically like let's go faster. They drive race cars and they say shake and bake to to mean let's go quicker. I think it's a little move they do uh on the racetrack. So, uh and when you're hot stuff, it means you're good looking and you're attractive or in English, we sometimes use the word sexy. So, when someone is very attractive, you would say um they're hot stuff. Um let's see here. Oh, I'm gonna switch to members only chat in a sec. Levi says, hey, Bob, I'm I'm noticing that English is getting more effortless for absorbing and understanding things. So, I made a few corrections there. I'm noticing that English is getting more effortless for absorbing and understanding things. I have two years acquiring English and it is becoming easier. Why? So, I fixed a few things there. One of the reasons it's becoming easier is because that's how our brains work. If you do something repeatedly and if you study a long time, your brain adapts, it learns and pretty soon it just becomes easier. So, that is a good sign. I think many people here will remember the first time they were watching an English TV show and then realize that five or ten minutes went by and they understood everything and they weren't even trying to understand it. It is a very, very nice feeling. Okay, here, let's see. Let's get members only chat going. For those of you that don't know what that is, during my live lessons for ten minutes, if you are a member, you can ask questions directly in the chat. I think this was set wrong but that's okay. I think it's set right now. Let's see if that makes the switch. Let me do a little audio check as well. I actually think my internet might be working a little bit better. Oh, what did I just do? Maybe I clicked the wrong button. Good. There we go. Um yes, if you are a member, you can ask questions directly in the chat. I will keep answering questions from here as well. Let's get the next one on the screen. Jose says, hi, teacher Bob. In a country song, the lyric says, them highways run forever. Confused about the use of the word them. Could it be replaced with those? Yes. So, the correct way to say it would be those highways run forever or these highways run forever if you're talking about specific highways. But uh sometimes in country songs, people speak with more of a country choice of words like them highways run forever. That's that's my little uh southern slash western accent. I was out all day and them highways run forever. So, that would be a way to use English incorrectly because wherever you're from, that might be correct in an informal way. So, that would be the description. Harry 300 from the chat says, how do you describe a student's reaction when the teacher is explaining many things but they just look frozen? We know they're trying to so hard to understand but unfortunately understand nothing. So, a couple of expressions there. You could say that they're just stunned. You could just say that they're completely confused. They're bewildered. You could also say they're like a deer in the headlights. So, this phrase a deer in the headlights means when you're driving a car, sometimes a deer will run in front of you and stop and look at you and hopefully it runs away again. But we sometimes use that expression to describe someone who is startled or confused or doesn't know what to do. Frozen would be another great word. Let's see here. Zeev says, hello, Bob. What's your time in Canada? It is 10.35 a.m. here in Canada. Um Yaroslav says, do you like watching funny YouTube shorts? What's your favorite teacher, Bob? I don't watch shorts or reels. And I don't go on TikTok. I think I'm too old for the really short, short videos. 
Um, but I will watch um like old vine compilations on YouTube. So, if someone puts a whole bunch of short videos together, I will watch that. Uh, yeah, Harry 300. I couldn't send that question because of the connection problem last week. Ah, yes. Gotcha. Uh, Freddie says, yeah, didn't two weeks ago, the internet quit working just as members only chat started. You guys got robbed. Um, Freddie says, salut Bob. Comment ça va? Ça va très bien. Uh, what do you usually have for your breakfast and did you have the time to take it calmly this Saturday morning? No, I didn't have breakfast yet. I usually have at this point in time, I'm eating two eggs and one piece of toast for breakfast. That is my standard breakfast. Uh, Mode says, what did I just hear? A southern accent, y'all. Yep. Uh, well, Bob's version of a cowboy, southern cowboy accent, accent, yes. Pony Taylor, could you explain between thaw and defrost? Let's say I want to use frozen meat. Yes, you would take it out. You would let it thaw. You would let it defrost. They're the same word for me. Um, if Jen said, oh, I'm going to cook a chicken but I need to defrost it first or she might say, I'm going to cook a chicken. I need to thaw it first. Both would work and if you're thawing meat, make sure you do it safely. The best way to thaw meat is actually in the fridge. Sounds kind of counterintuitive but we will often take a frozen chicken and put it in the fridge for two days and then cook it. We let it thaw in the fridge or defrost in the fridge. Um by the way, defrost is also what you do with your freezer every year or two. You take everything out and unplug it and defrost it. You take all of the ice will form in your freezer. You take all of that out. Um Jamal says, hi, Bob. I have a question but I would like to say that I have learned a lot from you. I appreciate your efforts. Thank you so much. Well, you're welcome, Jamal. I'm glad that I was able to help you. Uh Olga says, hi, Bob. Have you ever experienced VR? If your answer is yes, how was the experience of using VR? I have only tried one game in VR. I played Beat Saber. I liked it but it made me feel a little bit dizzy. I think I had a little bit of vertical vertigo. Sorry. Mode says, I challenge Dave the Canadian to leave a comment below this video. (laughs) That's Dave. Yeah. Phew, that's a challenge I can accept, says Dave. You had me worried. Oh, yeah. I saw that earlier. Mode was like, Dave, are you ready for a challenge? Lolly Lolly says, emotional ties, links, bonds, and connections. Are these words interchangeable? So, I have a lot of emotional links to my family. Emotional ties. I would use ties. You know, uh if you have Hopefully, you get along well with your siblings and have good emotional ties with them. Yeah, children develop an emotional tie with their parent. Emotional link. They all work. Yeah, and there is somewhat rare. We don't talk about emotional links and ties very often but uh, yes, they would all work for sure. Yaroslav, have you ever thought about installing a greenhouse to grow tropical fruits? There is a banana farm near me and the climate is similar to yours. No, We had a greenhouse once many, many years ago and it blew down during a windstorm. So, we have not rebuilt it and we we get a lot of windstorms here and we can't afford a glass greenhouse. So, we would put up a plastic greenhouse and I think it would blow down. Moat says, nah, I wouldn't get you in trouble, Dave the Canadian. I'm an innocent guy. Freddie says, Bob, I heard the word thrice that is falling once, twice. Is this word well known and currently used? So, In normal English speech, you do something once, you do it twice, you do it three times. You will hear the word thrice every once in a while. Probably on an older show where people are speaking older English. Let's see. Do people like I don't say thrice. Use the word thrice. I don't even know if it's a real word. Uh, Thrice is somewhat dated in American and British English usage and has been out of use in regular speech for some time. It makes your speech sound archaic or old. The standard is to say three times. That's more typical. Yeah. So, I went running once. I went running twice. I went running three times. That would be your common. If I said thrice, it would make it seem like we're watching an old British movie or something like that. Uh let's see. Dave says, okay, I'll try and trust you a little more. Lolly says, merci Bob, pas de problème. Mode says, you just explained to rig, Mr. Bob, but when something is rigged, that has a different meaning, right? Yeah, I don't wanna get into, there's another meaning of rig that has to do with things um 
Yeah, I don't want to use the words because the video will get demonetized. You'll have to use it up. Uh, use it up. You'll have to look it up um because I don't like to talk about things like that. It's not sexual. It's violent. It's related to something violent that happens in the world sometimes. So, you can rig something to do something. Jamal, what does it mean to be enthralled? So, if I met Ed Sheeran in real life, I would be enthralled. When you're enthralled, you're like, you don't know what to say and you're just You're like, wow, I'm meeting a famous person. Um you can also be enthralled over time. Like you can be enthralled with the music of Ed Sheeran. Um so, the definition is to capture the fascinated attention of someone. So, she has been enthralled by adventure or he has been enthralled by the music of the orchestra. So, there you go. It it just means to admire strongly. Um let's see here. Pony says, my son, four and a half years old, says, hi to Bob. Hi to Pony's son. I have wa- I love watching your videos and he's learned a lot of words. Well, I'm glad I could help Pony. I'm glad that even at my age, a four and a half year old uh, kid still finds me entertaining and is able to learn some things from me. That's awesome. Hey, let's get some questions on the screen. I'll leave members chat open for another minute or two before I close it. Uh let's see here. David, hey, what's up, Bob? I read more than four hours a day and listen four hours or more. I'm studying English for two years or I've been studying English for two years. That would be the best way to say that. Quantity is more important than quality. So, I think it's both and let me explain this. So, quantity means you do a lot. Quality means when you study, it's very good focused study. I actually um So, I'm gonna answer the question in the chat and come back to this, David. So, Helmuth says, have you met any of your viewers personally? So, interestingly enough, I have met three of my viewers personally. One in Niagara Falls a year and a half ago. One in a parking lot in my local town and just this past week, I was at Ikea and I was buying an ice cream cone and the person serving the ice cream cone said to me, hi, Bob. I said, Hi. And he's like, I know you. You're on YouTube. I watch your videos. And it was a very, very fun experience. I was actually, I didn't know what to say actually because it was uh surreal would be the word. Surreal means when life is hard to believe. So, yes, Helmuth, I have met uh some of my viewers uh in person or personally. Yep. Uh let's see. Dave says, I also heard rig used to refer to the outcome of competitions. Oh, like a boxing match can be rigged. So, that a specific person is secretly guaranteed to win. Yes, that's not the definition I was looking at but yes, definitely that is a good definition. Thanks, Dave. Mode says, Lolly is bringing a lot of synonyms today. You never see Lolly Lolly gagging in an English lesson. She's really determined to learn English. Yes, she is doing a great job. And then Mode says, that's the meaning I was referring to with elections too. Yes, they can rig an election. Uh, and Pony says, thank you, Bob. He's happy. No problem, Pony. And thank you for hanging out, learning English and helping your child learn English as well. Hey, I'm gonna get to the settings here and I'm gonna go back to subscriber only mode for chat and I'm going to uh talk for another 15, 20 minutes and see if I can get all of these questions answered. Um if you're a member and still want to ask a question in the chat, go ahead. I'll try to keep an eye on the chat. David was talking about learning English. So, quantity means you would simply study as much as you can, listen to English all the time, uh etc, etc. Quality would mean you have focused, well-made lessons um and I think both are important. Sometimes it's important for me as a language learner to just watch a lot of television and listen to a lot of music. Maybe I'm bored or I don't have a lot of time that week or there's a reason why I can't sit down and do focused study. I should still just casually listen uh to the language I'm learning. Um but I think it's important sometimes to you know watch a YouTube lesson and take notes and then review the notes and watch it again and read the transcript to have quality study as well. Freddie says, it's quite easy for me to listen to your amazing English lessons but once I have to speak myself, it will be quite a big deal. An autre paire de manches. I'm not familiar with that phrase. I will have to look it up, definitely. Une autre paire de manches. Is that like a different jaw, maybe? 
Let me look it up quick. I have time. Of une autre perte. Oh, yes. C'est une situation complètement différente. Tâche beaucoup plus difficile à accomplir. Okay, oui, je comprends maintenant. There we go. Now I know a new phrase. I learned a new phrase during my English lesson. It's not an English phrase though, but that's okay. Uh let me see here. Next question. Um Max or Maxim says, Hello, Mr. Bob. What's the main TV channel in Canada? I want to practice my English and know more about life in Canada at the same time. So, the main TV station, it's not the one we watch the most but the main Canadian TV station is the CBC. It's from the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation and it's the TV station where the government still gives them money to make Canadian television shows. That would be the most popular Canadian TV station. The reason I say that the most popular Canadian is because most Canadians watch the American uh TV channels. So, probably the four most common TV channels in Canada are CBS, ABC, NBC and Fox and those are all American TV channels but we do watch CBC and there's a few other smaller Canadian channels as well. So, from Ace U, hey Bob, good day to you. Question one, can you make a couple of sentences with sense of something? So, when I started making videos, I felt very awkward. I needed to get a sense of how to do them better. Um when I started walking every day, um I needed to get a sense of the type of walking I enjoyed the most which is actually walking in nature. So, it's when you're learning something, you're trying to get a feel for it. You're trying to get a sense of it. Um you're trying to learn how to do it. So, having a good English conversation, sometimes you need to get a sense of it. Um you have to do a lot of it so you understand how to do it. Question two, what things would you try if you knew you wouldn't fail and then love from and then I don't know the emoji there. So, it's probably a flag that I should recognize. Sorry. Um I would try everything if I knew I wouldn't fail. If I could be a rock star and knew I wouldn't fail, I would do that. If I could drive a train and knew I wouldn't fail, I would do that. Life is best lived with lots of experiences. By the way, uh Failing isn't a bad thing. You learn a lot when you fail. Uh Lato Lato says, excuse me, sir. Do you agree we can make a class on Zoom about questions and answers? Sounds interesting to have someone outside of your reach access you. So, I personally am not planning to do Zoom classes, okay? Um I'm not interested in doing it at this time because I don't have a lot of time. I make YouTube videos. I do live streams. I still go to work every day. Um but except today because it's Saturday. So, I don't have a lot of time. I often say maybe when I'm older and semi-retired, I might do that but you are quite welcome to meet people and create a group on Zoom and talk. That would be great. Yuri, do you often use phrasal verbs or maybe it's better to use ordinary verbs? Do they sound more natural? So, yes, we use phrasal verbs all the time. No, you don't have to use them to survive but you need to know them in order to understand English. Um I'll make another video this year where throughout the day, I will just listen to people and I'll write down whenever I hear a phrasal verb and then I'll make a lesson about it because it's very common to hear them. As someone learning to speak English, you don't have to be able to use them but you definitely have to be able to understand them because you will hear them all the time. Uh let me go back to the chat for a sec. Um Lolly says, j'adore ton léger accent canadien, Bob. Merci beaucoup. Yaroslav says, Canadian French different to the French language originally. Yes. Um so, if you're from Quebec, I always say it's like this. There are different English accents like if you're from Australia or Uh, Scotland or Canada, you will sound different. People from Quebec and people from France sound very different. And even within France, there are different, uh, slightly different accents. Um, let's see here. Pony says, for me, not only watching English teacher, I also watch the channel that I'm interested in English such as channel about, yes, about makeup, history and cooking. This helps me a lot. Actually, I got the advice from Bob. That is great advice. 
Um you shouldn't just be watching YouTube videos in English about learning English. If you like riding horses, you should be watching English speakers who make videos about riding horses. If you like baking cakes, you should watch English speakers who have YouTube videos about baking cakes. Whatever your interests are in life, whatever your hobbies are, watch those videos in English. So, let's see here. Um phrasal verbs. And then Eugene from Etobicoke says, hello from Baja, California, Mexico. Hopefully, I'm reading Eugene's name correctly. Eugene must be traveling because he's not in Etobicoke right now. Um and then Yaroslav says, phrasal verbs are a disaster for me and my poor students who I make to learn them. Yes, they they are tricky but you gotta learn them definitely. Uh Isaac says, hello, Bob. I'm from Brazil. Have you been here in South America? If not, do you feel like visiting here? Yes, I have promised Rod, the English teacher who is from Brazil that someday if I visit Brazil, I will visit him. Um so, we'll see but Brazil is not on the top of my list of countries to visit. I would like to visit France and the Netherlands. Um that those are the top two and I think I can do that in one trip. They're close enough. Uh and then after that, I think I would like to visit the UK. I know it's not an um it's not a country where they speak French but uh I would definitely visit there. Um let's see here. From this is for you from BB. Hello, Bob. Would it be possible for you to explain the meaning of puree, live out and deed? I hope you are having a fantastic first week of 2023 so far. Yes. So, a puree like if you take an apple and you peel it you take out the core and you put it in a blender and turn the blender on. It won't make it a liquid. It would make it a puree. So, applesauce is a puree. A lot of times, if you take fruits or vegetables and blend them, it'll make a puree. We often do this when we're feeding babies. When babies can start to eat regular food, we will puree things for them so they're easier to swallow. Um and then live out like the best example I can come up with with for live out is you need to live out your dreams. Um like we're saying you need to do what makes you happy. Um and deed is just something you do. Like there's good deeds and bad deeds. It's you should do a good deed every day which means you should do something nice for someone. Um and you shouldn't do bad deeds. Uh and then I hope you are having a fantastic first week of 20. Yes, I'm having a great week. So far, so good. Yeah, I'm very much enjoying it. Uh let's see. Lolly says, yes, Yaroslav, but we can understand each other easily but there are a lot of different expressions difficult to understand for us. Yes. A Quebec, on on met sa voiture dans le stationnement mais je pense que en France, on met sa voiture dans le parking. I think in Quebec, you don't say parking because it's an English word but I think in France, you can. Sorry if I made any mistakes speaking French there. Uh Freddie says there are two different ways to count in French. Oh yeah, there's the I don't know that method. Very cool. Okay, let me get back to the questions. I'm losing track because I'm enjoying the chat which I should. It's a good thing to enjoy. Um let's see here. And K says I have to learn English because I love the English language. So, will you give me some ideas that how can I improve my English language without a partner? So, I fixed a few things while I read that. Number one, you need a speaking partner at some point. Okay? So, you can spend a lot of time reading. You can spend a lot of time listening to music and podcasts. You can spend a lot of time watching English TV. You can spend a lot of time practicing your writing but at some point, you do need to speak the language and I do recommend if you can just find someone for 30 minutes a week, it's it's a good thing to do. Um for me, if I don't have a speaking partner, then I do less of all the other things. The fact that I know because I'm I have a French speaking partner, the fact that I know that once a week we'll be talking, it makes me do more stuff in French. On met la voiture au parking. We au parking. Wait. Thanks, Lolly. Okay. Tupan says, do you play computer games? Yes, I'm currently playing Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. And I also downloaded, I can't remember what it's called, Cities Skylines. I might play that a little bit this year. 
I have to look on my computer. The icon for city skylines is right there on my main computer. So, I'll play that a little bit this winter. From Selma. Hi, Bob. Hi. Could you please pronounce fool, full, fall for me? By the way, I'm six years old. That's awesome that you're learning English and you're six years old. That's very, very cool, Selma. So, keep at it. So, anyways, when someone acts silly, you might say they're a fool. Ah, he's always acting silly. He's a fool. Um, when I start my live stream, my cup is full. By the way, I have two cups today. This one's empty. This one's full or it's almost full. And some water just fell. So, I can't use the word fall there. If I let go of this cup, it will fall. That's pretty good, eh? I should become a circus uh circus actor or something like that. So, fool. That's my my uh acting out a fool. Uh full would be a cup that has water up to here is full and then when you drop something, it will fall. Anyways, Selma, six years old. Keep learning English. Awesome work. Um let's see here. From believe in yourself. Good morning, teacher Bob. Are these sentences grammatically correct? Spices taste good in food. Chilies are spicy. According to countable and uncountable. Thanks. Yes, they are both correct. Spices taste good in food. Chilies are spicy. They're not just um correct. They're also true. I would agree with both. Um this is from Kwang Hu Ha. Hi, I'm one of your patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Please tell me what kinds of gear you're using to make videos these days. Thanks. So, I added an S there to make videos these days. I have a Canon R6 with a 15 to 35 wide angle lens. I have a couple of different microphones. Actually, I let me show you the microphone I just bought. (laughs) So, it's usually really windy here and so, the microphone I normally use is this one. See this little microphone here? That's the one I normally use on my Canon R6. By the way, this is um I can't remember what that's called. The DJI Pocket 2, I think. I use that for my short videos. Anyways, it gets really windy and then I can't get good audio. So, I bought what's called a blimp. So, this is the microphone I use now when I go outside on a windy day. It actually just has a small microphone inside of it but this big cover stops the wind and uh makes everything work better. Um I have that's about it. I have a couple of different lights that I use but uh yeah, I use the pocket too if I'm walking and talking and I use the Canon R6 if it's on a tripod. Um, I am Mercy has joined as a member. Good to have a new member. Welcome, I am Mercy. Nice to see you. Uh, let me get back to the question here. Yes, I think I answered it. And then I just have two computers. I have a laptop for live streaming uh, and then I have a main computer for a little bit of editing but mostly I send the files off to Jenna now. Angel says, Bob, please, what is the most effective technique in order to improve speaking? Find an English speaking partner. Have an English conversation with them once a week. That is the most effective way to improve speaking. If you can't do that, you can talk out loud a lot. You can record your voice and listen to it. You can watch videos and pause and say what the person is saying. All of those things are great But the best thing you can do to improve your speaking is to uh, have at least a 30 minute conversation once a week with a tutor. That's just the best. Online, Facebook or uh, FaceTime, Skype, Zoom, whatever. All of those work. Uh, Let's see. Freddie says, your new microphone is quite fluffy. Yes. Um it definitely is. Let me see. Where am I at here? Camera's going off but I'm not done yet. Couple questions left. Oh, this is from Mahmood. Hi, Mahmood. Hi, teacher Bob. Could you please edit your old English classes and cut the Q&A out? Thank you. Have a great day. I could do that but I do tend to redo those lessons every once in a while. I haven't redone all of them and I actually prefer to redo them because when I do the live lessons now, 
I'm very structured. Like I do the lesson for 10 minutes, questions for 10 minutes, lesson and it's a little easier for me to cut them out. So, instead of editing the old ones, Mahmood, as we go through the year, I will redo some. If there's one or two that you want me to redo, please leave a comment. Like say, please redo the one on I think I did redid the one on sports but if there's an old lesson you want me to redo, I would rather do that. It's just easier for me to edit it if I do it that way. So, but thanks Mahmood. Yeah, but leave a comment. If there's one or two or even five that you want me to redo, let me know. So, uh let's see here. Oh, it says it's 11 o'clock. That means I'm done and all the questions are done. So, that's cool. Hey, thanks for hanging out again. I think the live stream worked great. I don't think there were many technical issues at all. I'm just gonna look through the chat for a sec. Uh Tusif is saying, could you pronounce faux pas? Yeah, a faux pas is when you do something in public that's not acceptable. So, if you um if you went skating at an arena, if they had skating for families, and you went and you brought your hockey stick and wore all your hockey equipment, that would be a faux pas because you're doing something that's not allowed during that time or 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 that's frowned upon. So, anyways, thanks for watching everybody. Bye to Mode Eggs, Freddie Wolf, Lolly Lolly, Yaroslav, all of the members hanging out. Bye to Ario and Judith who I know were here as well. Thanks to Dave the Canadian uh for moderating the chat. Very valuable uh to have a good moderator. I love that. So, thanks again, Dave. Um I'm just gonna check the audio one more time. Yeah, it sounds great. So, uh Freddie Wolf. Bye, Bob. Thanks for the awesome Q&A. No problem. Bye, Freddie. Wanda says, bye, teacher Bob. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Judith says, bye, everyone. Awesome. So, I'm gonna say bye to Nano. Bye to Hukuna Wilma. I'm probably not saying some people's names correctly. Bye, Judith. Bye, Brahim. Bye, CS team. Uh, bye to W Dal, Jagan, Mems or Memes, Hasu, Unsel. Hi, Unsel. Bye, Unsel. Bye to Maxim, Yaroslav, Lolly Lolly. I'm repeating names now. Anyways, have a great weekend, everyone. Uh, new video coming out Tuesday, of course, and uh, live stream next uh, next Friday. So, I will see you then.